You remember that you love him, praise God, more than anything. That means nothing comes close. Amen. It is so good to have you today. We, we welcome the live stream audience. We welcome the online church and all of that. And if you would please go to Revelations chapter 5 and let's continue along the path that we've been going. And um, verse 11 says, And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them were 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice <laughs> goodness gracious life worthy is a lamb that was slain to receive power come on somebody what is that dunamis and riches and what is that blue toes come on and wisdom and who is that so fear and strength and who is that Come on. Iskus in honor. And who's that? To May, right? All right. Just gave you that one on Thursday, right? Now we're at glory, which is doxa. Doxa, D-O-X-A. Doxa, it is G-1391. Doxa. So these are the Greek words that are saying. Now, children can be released. And by the way, let the children. I forgot. I just had my song, you know. So... <laughs> So the children can go in the back and can y'all usher them back there, Pastor Briggs, if you can usher them back there and let him know where to go. <clears throat> All right. So this word, this word doxa is an amazing word. Um, and it's interesting, too, because um, in the in the New Testament, as we deal with it, you don't find um, a whole lot um, of this except Paul talks about it a lot as far as glory he talks about doxa a lot um, the exceeding um, again who Christ in me is the hope of what glory. glory hope of glory so the hope of the glory that I have is in me that's the doxa but now most in the church have confused glory um, over the years and I, I've taught this body that that been around for a while a lot about this and uh, some of you that have never heard it so I have to tell you again tell you again but this is serious when you understand glory when you understand glory you can now start functioning in glory glory is not some kind of um, um, intangible thing um, you know um, in many many cases we say glory be to God and what are we saying we really don't know what we've been saying. We just say it because it's good, it's good to be saying it. But most don't have a clue what they're saying when they say glory be to God. And it's interesting because actually when you're saying glory be to God, you're actually talking about the glory that he's given to you to give back to God. Okay? Glory be to God. My gl The glory I have be to God. They give, I give the glory back to God. Glory be to God. But what am I giving to him? Glory be to God. What am I giving to him? What is it? You know, and so, you know, you be in services and there can be an outpouring of the spirit of God. And people can say, well, the glory of God was there. Was it? The question is, was it? Was that outpouring? Was that outpouring actually the glory of God? You see, and most have for years thought that it is. That, okay, because we had this major outpouring of the Spirit of God, that was the glory of God. Okay? And I can tell you, actually, that isn't what it is. But, <laughs> but let me give you the definition. Again, it is, it is dignity. It's glory. It's honor, in, interesting enough. It's praise. It's worship. You can add all those words to this word glory. But the main word I want you to grasp about this word is the word weight. The word weight. Doxa have a weight to it. And so this is one of the ways that you have said and understood glory in the earth. You've come into a meeting. You can come into a meeting with a bunch of people and you can say, Who, who's carrying the weight in here? Yeah. Yeah. Who, what are you saying when you say that? Who's leading this? Who's the one? Who's got, who's got, who's got the authority in here? Who's got the weight in here? Actually, when we, when we first started studying this word years ago, one of the things that was clear was that the weighty one would leave an imprint in the earth. 
that the weighty one would leave an imprint that they're not light weighted, but they are weighty. They leave an imprint in the earth for people to be able to follow years later. So that means glory can be followed because of the weight of God that's on you. Are you with me? So be unto him glory. Can you follow his glory, you think? Can you follow Jesus' glory? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can. You've been following it for, for eons. But what have you been following? Okay. And so it, so one of the things it is not, some, some things it's not, um, it, is, it is literally not light. It is not some mist in the air. It's not even a cloud. But, but remember, it says because of the cloud of glory, they could not minister. It was not the cloud. It was, it's what was in the cloud. Did you catch what I just said? It was not the cloud. The cloud was a protective covering, and we'll see that. The, the cloud was a protective covering um, because God tells Moses this, and when we go over there, you see it. He says, no man can see me and live. Okay? So the cloud becomes a protective covering so that you don't look on God and die. Are you with me? So everybody want to know, you know, the cloud. Talk about the cloud. You know, it was, you know, well, what was in the cloud? It's what's in the cloud. It's not the cloud. Are you, are you getting that? But what was in the cloud had a glory, had a weight to it that you got to understand today. Because these, because of what I told you on Thursday, if you saw the message or if you haven't, you need to really go back and look at that. Because what we've done now, we've transitioned from kingship into priesthood. We, the first four of these um, attributes or qualities that's given unto Christ or things that's given unto Christ are for kings. It's power, it's riches, it's wisdom, and strength. That's for kings. The next three is for priests. You see that? Are you with me? It is for honor, and we dealt with the hollowing of his name on the honor, and you cannot, you cannot honor and value something that you don't place value on. Remember that? Okay? You have to place value on it for it to be valuable. Okay, y'all got that? And so, so you can't honor somebody you don't, you don't, you haven't placed any honor on. So Jesus said, "Hallow his name, put honor on his name, honor his name, know that he is God, and 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 approach him based on the fact that you honor him." And so that's where we are with that. And so then that's the priest, that's a priestly position, because again, you are designed to minister unto the Lord. The Bible says you were designed for his good pleasure. Yes. Isn't that interesting? You're designed for his good pleasure. You were created for his good pleasure. So your job as priest is to minister to God. We think, we think, when we think about priesthood, we think about the go-between, which is nothing wrong with that. We think about the stand in between the gap person, which is the intercessor for the generation. And there's truly nothing wrong with that at all. But the whole mindset that I want you to understand is that a priest's job is to minister to God. When you, when you moved into this place, um, when, the, when Aaron or the Levitical priest moved into this place, uh, past, past the, past the brazing altar, everything was ministry to God. Everything else is ministry to God. Everything in the, in the door is ministry to God. Behind the veil is ministry to God. All of this is ministry to God. It is not for people anymore. The next thing that is for people back behind there is the day of atonement. But even that is ministry to God, is doing it God's way as a priest. So as a priest, your primary function should be ministry to Father. Through the Son, Jesus. Are y'all? Okay, y'all not shaking hard enough for me. Okay, all right. But I'm, I am so grateful to God. I am so grateful to God that he did not put the priestly part first. Now, more, many people don't even know as a priest, they wouldn't, they wouldn't divide it. They may not even divide it like I did just then. They may, not, they may just go through all of them and never understand. But remember, he says, he's made unto us, made unto us, uh, um, what? Kings and priests. Made unto us g kings and priests. We've been made unto our God kings and priests. So all that Jesus have, we have. Jesus was a king. Yeah. He, he is a priest. Amen. Yes. All right. Because when he comes back, he comes back as a king. Oh, yes. That's good. That's good. That's good. 
Are you with me? Yes. So, so when, when we understand this, we got to go, okay, now my position is what? My position is as a priest. And so what I'm saying to you is I'm glad that he put that second so that we wouldn't go there first. Because it is our tendency to go there to prayer and, and, and praise and worship and all that first and never get to kingship. Which I'm also grateful that he mentioned kings before he mentioned priests. You see? So you have to deal, deal with kingship before you can deal with priesthood. But you should have known that from Peter. You should have known that from Peter. Peter said you are royal priests. Do you see? He put kings before priests. You are royal. You're royalty that are priests. You are royalty that happen to be a priest. But again, if you don't function in your royalty, you, you just function in your priesthood and therefore you don't understand the authority. And, and when you don't understand the authority, you're being taken advantage of in most cases. The world is running you. Come on, am I, am I, talking, to, am I talking to the right people? Y'all tracking? The world can run you. Your own life can run you. And everything around you can now take authority over you when you're supposed to have the authority. Okay? You're still not shaking hard enough for me. You're shaking soft on me. This is just review stuff, man. You soft, you soft shaking on me this morning. So, so, but is, is that making any sense? So again, so, so I won't go way past this. You, you, you should be taking note, journaling where you are taking your authority. That's right. That's right. Amen. Where are you using dunamis? <clears throat> Where are you using iskus? Where are you using these things that are that's that's the power? Where come on, how are you functioning in Sophia? How are you functioning in this place of you know it's interesting too because I was um we were looking at something uh, uh, on on the internet the other day over there at the house there, and um, it was on YouTube because now they have a um, they have a new um, AI Android that is better than the first Android. The first Android was a woman. They made this one a man. He has facial expressions. He can he can he can have all kinds of facial expressions. Any kind he can talk to you, and you would think you're talking to a human. That's how serious it's gotten. Now watch this. This is interesting. I want you to guess it. I want you to guess this. I want you to miss it. The first AI, her name was Sophia. Well, most people just heard heard her and she's been on the Tonight Show. She's been on she's been on several TV shows. And they said, What's her name? Sophia. Nobody even knows who that is. When I first heard, I said, isn't this a trip? They done now, they've now taken the name Wisdom for the Android. But if you don't know Greek, you don't know. <laughs> Just sound like a nice woman's name. Okay? No. They were taking, they were saying, she is Wisdom. No, she's not. Hello. I said, no, she's not. But they are about to, you know, oh, this is just ridiculous. I'm not going through that today. <laughs> you got to get me off. So, so again, you've got to function in, unto the Lord as priest. Kings first, priests next. Are you with me? Are you, most people need you to function as a king. Yeah. Mm. It's true. Most people need kingship in their life. You got that? All right? And then you can stand in that gap for them, but they need you to be able to take some things out of their life that is dealing with their life. And as a king, you can now shut that stuff down. That's right. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Now, Sister Trusty, are you back there writing? Yes. You're writing. Wow. Now, you, you think, okay, she's just writing. 
No, she ain't just writing. You, she, your writing is a miracle. So she called me the other day and said, I got a problem going on in my life, Bishop. The doctors have told me some things. And I said, mm, okay. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the doctors. <laughs> but we're not receiving nothing that the doctors just told you. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're about to take authority over this. Yes. Yeah. Now, she said she was in her house, and the Lord just put my face before her. And yeah. she said she saw me as though she, she, I was standing there. And she knew she had to call me. Yeah. Well, she caught me in a good time. Praise God. That ain't always easy. Yeah. All right. So she called me in a good time. And I said, let's take care of this. Let's change this right now. It's an outside issue. It's an outside issue. Even though it's dealing with your body, it's an outside issue. Oh, you got to hear me. It's an outside issue. Now, now listen to me close so, so you can grab this. The reason why I believe also that what happened for her happened so fast is because she obeyed what she saw. Are you with me? She obeyed and that was faith. Do you understand that? That that I, my faith is in you. Show me this dude. I'm calling this dude. Okay. Now does she have the same level of authority? Absolutely. But God just said, "No, I'm going. I'm going to allow him to help you today." Is that making any sense? Why? Because the the strong sometimes must bear the infirmity of the weak. And 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 what she was dealing with in her mind and all this stuff, she was a little weak in that. I am not weak. Yeah. No, you might be, you know, you're a little weak in this, but I'm not weak. And so what, she, what happened is she could not do what she's doing. I just, I'm not to take you into all her stuff, but she could not sit there and write. And she realized on Thursday night that she was able to write. Oh, y'all not hearing me. Got notes. Now who did that? Jesus the Christ. Now wait a minute now. I didn't I didn't touch her. No. I wasn't in the same room with her. We were just on the phone. And I said to her, we're gonna excuse this thing. We're not learning this stuff just to be learning some new words and have in and out dic dictionary definitions and be able to tell somebody like we're smart about something. We ain't, that ain't what this is about. We're about using this authority. I said, girl, you're going to be fine. We're getting this out of here. In Jesus name. First thing I asked her on when she walked through the door, I said, how you doing? How you doing? How you feeling? Is anything going on? Okay, have you been better? Oh, she said, I've been better. Yeah. Yes, you're going to be better and even getting greater. Because yeah. God gave us a word on Thursday night. What did he give us? What word did he give us Thursday night? He said, I'm going to get you younger. He said, I'm going to reverse time. Y'all ain't hear me? He said, I'm reversing time. You're going to get younger. You're going to get better. Glory to God. I told mother, you got that cane with you? Did you bring that cane with you? Okay, you brought that thing. I said, that thing got to get out of here. We ain't having no cane. You got to have a straight back, upright. Glory to God. Be able to dance like, you know, like David danced. Hallelujah. We want that. We want that for you. That's kingship. But guess what I also did, ladies and gentlemen? What did I do after I took my authority and ran that thing away from her life and said, this is a lying demon. It is not going to be attached to you. You will not be under this. What did you think? I? What was my next job? Come on, talk to me. Say somebody, somebody talk loud up in here. What was it you said? What you said, Raymond? I got to go to the priesthood. I now got to go and stand before God on her behalf. Yeah. Do you hear me? Yes. See, I took the authority, but then I had to go and say, God, okay, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. I, I was riding down, I was riding down the street, and, and then she came on my heart, and I said, okay, let's, let's deal with this again. Yes. Why? Because now I'm a priest for her, because I've already taken authority, and you need to know that I mean what I say. Yes. So you do what I tell you, 
But at the same time, now I'm priestly before that this thing don't reverse and don't do it. I'm going to be a priest. I'm going to stand in the gap now. Uh, are you making any sense? Kings and priests. Not king or. It's both. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? Amen. And so now we've gotten to the place that, we, again, we honored him. That was fabulous on Thursday, how we went into prayer and prayed over the thing. But, but that, that's, that's just one part of it. You see, he says, now, not only you honor me, you understand my glory. So if you would, please, go to Matthew 6. Whew. We're going right back to where we were because it's in both places. So all this stuff is there. Let's go back to verse 9. And he says, After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And that's where we were on Thursday. To hallow the name of the Lord. Right? He says, Thy kingdom come and thy what? Will be done. Where? As it is, yeah. if you're gonna have a kingdom, you gotta have some kings. That's right. You got that? So kings are oh, because of the kingdom. Give us this day our what? Daily bread. Daily bread. And forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Then he says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now watch. For thine is the kingdom. The kingdom belongs to you. Your kingdom come. The kingdom belong to you. Listen, listen to what it says again in Revelation. Jesus is king of kings. Think about that for a moment. Again, he's king of kings. Now listen to me, listen. For years in my own mindset, I, 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 I considered him king of kings over the earth. That all of the kings that could be on the earth or all the authorities that are on the earth, that he's king over that. He's not talking about them at all. They are not even a part of his thoughts. He's talking about you. Wow. That's good, sir. He is the king over all of you kings. Yes, Lord. But you are, but you are kings. Yes, sir. And the kingdom belongs to him. We're kings, hello, but we don't own a kingdom. Oh, you, you get that? See, because what happened is when a, when a stronger king came to a lesser king, they cut covenant. When they cut covenant, the, 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 the kingdom that is lesser becomes the kingdom of the greater. Yes. Did you hear what I'm saying? See, so that's occupation. So that, so now the lesser kingdom becomes a part of the the greater kingdom. So even though you are kings and you reign over a kingdom, your kingdom is subject to the greater kingdom. Everybody got that? Yes. So that's what we did. So we got to walk around functioning as kings. And I don't know. I got. got I got to get to glory. So come on, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Have a brother out here. So what happened is, listen. What I realized, and I'm, I'm, I'm. This is why I think I'm dealing with this this morning. Even what I'm realizing, even and greater, is that you're not really w waking up as a king. Amen. You probably still waking up more as priests. You waking up praying, thinking about praying. Come on, but you're not waking up thinking about ruling. That's good. I shall reign with him. Come on. That's that's Romans chapter five. I was, Lord help me. You got to reign with him. You got you to wake up thinking about the fact that you reign with him. So we will reign today, Lord. Yes. Yes. Should be some of the first things coming out of y'all. We're going to reign today. What are we going to take over? Amen. What should, we, what should we rule over? And how shall we rule over it? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. In the proclamation, in the declaration, in the decree that we make here in this church, it's in there on purpose. We're not under the power of any. 
You must take that as, come on, that's your faith. I'm not under the power of anything. There is nothing that subdues me. Yes. Yes, Lord. Because I subdue all kingdoms. Yes, Lord. And everything is subdued to me. Yes. Oh, I got to get to glory here. Y'all, are y'all with me? Yes. Man, the Holy Ghost is really pounding me up here about this thing here. That you got to function as royalty. Yes. That's good. You know the thing, you know the thing that helps really helps a king? Not only do they know they're king, but they they dress like kings. They do. They have a crown on their head. That's right. They got a crown on their head. That crown says you king. That robe they put on them says you king. But that crown is more than anything. Come on. The four and twenty elders, what are they doing? I can't hear. What are they casting? They got crowns, man. Yeah, that's right. That's they got right. crown. You need to go home and make you a paper crown. <laughs> <laughs> go home and make you a paper crown. Get up in the morning. Take your crown and put that thing on your head. Get dressed with your crown on. Yep, that's who I am. That's who I am. Looking in the mirror, brushing your teeth. I'm a king. <laughs> Everybody got it? But then he says this. He says, not only does the kingdom belong to you, he says, the duty must belong to you too. The power belongs to you. The power belongs to you. He says, not only does the power belong to you, he says, also, the glory belongs to you. <laughs> Do you understand what he just did when he does power and glory? Can you, can you, Come on, what, come on. Can, do, do you see it? Anybody in here when he says power and glory? Do you see what, do you see what Matthew did right there? Come on, can anybody, did anybody see it yet? What do, they, what do you see? It's power and glory. What do you see? Yeah, come on, girl. I like, that's why I like you. That's why he married you. Because you're so smart. <laughs> right, what is it? It's king. Power, priest, glory. Yes. <laughs> Are y'all with me? Yes, kingdom of, come on, king, a kingdom of kings and priests. All of it belong to you, though. Come on, all of it belong to you. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I love it, man. And I, I've got to keep moving, man, because if I don't keep moving, I'm going to. I'm gonna mess up. So go to Romans, go to Romans, go to Romans 3. So much, so much, so much. Mm -hmm. Romans 3. Come on, let's get it. Well, I'm gonna try to learn you something. <laughs> All right, so let's do verse 21. Yeah, let's start there. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. And look what he says here. He says, for all have sinned and come short of the what? Glory of God. And come short of the glory of God. This is an amazing thing. All have sinned. And all have come short of the glory of God. And for years, and for years I dealt with the fact that I'm going, what did I come short of? Because if glory is some intangible, mm -hmm. how could I obtain to it? Right. Are y'all tracking? Mm -hmm. If it's an intangible, if it's, a, if, it's, if it's a mist in the air, if it's a cloud, if it's light, or if it's something, how can I, how did I come short of that? So glory has to be something more than all of that intangible stuff. It has to be very tangible. So that I know that I came short of it. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Okay, so if you would go to Isaiah. Come on. Go to Isaiah chapter 60. 
Come on. I love teaching this. This is so good stuff right here because it brings us into balance right here. This, this right here brings us into balance. Notice what it says in verse, in verse 1. It says, arise and shine for what? Thy light. thy light has come. Now, notice, again, thy light has come. Now, if, if you're connecting glory and light, you're going to be upset in a moment because Isaiah separates them. That's right. He said, rise, shine, for your light has come. Now, the light of God that has come to you is so that you can walk therein. Okay. And so that you can illuminate your path, but also illuminate for others to follow. Guess what? You are the light of the world. Did you know that? Yes. You're, so you are light, okay? But you also have glory. <laughs> you are light. So arise, shine, for your light has come and... Notice it says and is a conjunction. And what? The glory, the glory of the Lord. Where is it? Okay, it's, on, it's risen upon me. Okay, so there I got this, this glory is mine. It's, it's mine, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> I know I got it. Isaiah told me I got it. He said, you got light and you got glory. Okay, what is this glory thing, Lord, if I got glory? He says, man, not only do you have glory, stuff going to happen because you have glory. Why? What's going to happen? He said, behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And what? Gross darkness, Gross darkness to the people, but the Lord shall what? And what? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Ar ar his, 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 his light shall rise upon you and... Wait a minute. His glory shall be seen upon you. So that means this. As you're walking the earth, kings and priests, as you're walking the earth, as you're walking the earth, people should see the glory of God on you. That's right. And the only place that we talk about glory... It's right here. We don't talk about glory. No place other than right cheer. Right here. Yeah. And if it's risen on me, I'm supposed to be everywhere I go. That's right. I am the light of the world, so if I'm the light of the world, everywhere I go, light's supposed to be shining. Right. Hello? Yeah. I'm supposed to be illuminating the kingdom to folk. So that folk can see the kingdom because of the light that's on me. All right. But not only the lights on me, there's glory on me. And somebody should be reacting to the glory. That's right. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. But I can tell you that for most of the body of Christ, there's not a whole lot of reaction going on to no glory. Verse 3, let's, let's, let's keep seeing all this effect of this light and glory. Because it's pretty good. What does he say? And Gentiles and I'm trying to tell you something. I'm trying to tell you something. The Gentiles going to run to your light. Matter of fact, we put it this way. You know, bugs run to light. Yeah. What do you mean? What, what, what do you mean? You calling people bugs? No, I'm talking about sin and evil and yeah, yeah. runs to light. Yeah. Got to find light. Yeah. Got to need some light. Yeah. Need some light. Yeah. We're around too many people that we don't go offer them the light. Yeah. We let them live in their way and we don't offer them the light. I got your answer. I got you. I got you. I got your path that you can walk on. That's better than the path you on. You know, what's going on in your world? Uh, let, by the way, let me say this to you so you can get this. Because um, I told the men this yesterday, and this is especially true about men. But it's also true about women as well in some cases. In the sense that you cannot get away with asking somebody how they're doing one time and think they're going to tell you. Okay? Especially men. You ask a man, how you doing? Oh, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. Everything's going well. Really? Everything going well? Come on, brother. How you, how you really doing? How are things, how are things really going? I really want to know. Oh, I'm good. No, yeah, I, I hear you say that, but bro, how are things really going? See, well, you know, I got a little stuff going on with me, but it ain't nothing. So tell me about it. See, you got you to peel that onion back. 
Because they're not going to first, they're going to tell you right away. Pride. Especially us, usins, who are men, we don't want nobody in our business and we can handle it ourselves and we all right. No, you're not all right. But I, I, I just, you know, tell me what's going on with you. See? What are you struggling with? Not to get into no deep interview either. You know? Because if he doesn't want to tell you, you know, you keep asking and we'll make him even run more. You see? So you can come back another day and you'll get another shot at it. But now he knows you really want to know. So even though, even though he doesn't tell you that day, he might tell you the next day. He can say, you know, you asked me how I was doing the other day and I didn't want to say much that day, man, but I'm, I'm having some issues. You see? Is that making any sense? <laughs> um, um, and he'll tell you what is, what's going on. We, we, have a, we have a joke amongst Pastor Luster and Pastor Blue. We have a little joke that we, that there's a, a gentleman in Richmond, Virginia, a very good friend of mine. I told you about him several times, how he taught me how to love washing windows. Um, his name is Otis. He did a lot of ministry in the city. And he went to his pastor and said to his pastor, um, because they were part of a faith church, he said he went to the pastor and he says, Pastor, um, I'm, I'm, I'm having some, um, some serious um, struggles. He said, and the pastor said, bro, don't, don't say you're struggling, man. Say you have some challenges. You know, just change that. Say you have some challenges. Don't say you're struggling. He said, Pastor, I'm struggling with these challenges. <laughs> I'm struggling with these challenges. I understand you want me to change, <laughs> but I'm struggling with these challenges. There are a whole lot of brothers, a whole lot of sisters that are struggling with challenges. And they need somebody that they can talk to. And you got to be the light to that. But not only should you be the light to it, they should see the glory of God on you. Now we got to find out what in the world is it. What is this glory? Remember Isaiah chapter 6. Go there for a second. Let me, let me, let me show you this. Isaiah 6. Isaiah 6. Verse 1 says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. It says, Above it stood the seraphims. Each had six wings. With twine, with two. <laughs> he covered his face. And with two, he covered his feet. And with two, he did fly. Now I've, I've, I've taught this for years And you may want to put it in your, in your Bible But that's two thirds of the time He's worshipping oh, One third of the time He's working oh. Two thirds of the time He's worshipping Two is two covering his face Two covering his feet And two flying So two thirds of the time He's worshipping Covering his face and his feet. And one third of the time he's working. Let me ask you. <laughs> you already know the question, huh? Yeah, come, come on, help me. I think you, you already know the question, right? Would, how, what would your wings be doing? You'd be flying with all six of them. <laughs> all six of your wings flapping. You got six wings of flapping. No worship going. Oh my goodness. Preach, Bishop. Or five wings and one wing will cover your face or something, you know. Say, let me get a little worship in here. Five wings just a flapping. More work than worship in our life, isn't it? Hello? More work than worship in our life. Not the seraphims. Because they, they know who they're dealing with. When you know who you're dealing with, you treat him different. You approach him different. Come on, somebody. Verse 2 says, and, a, and, a, <laughs> and they did fly, right? And verse 3 says, and one cried unto another. 
And what did they say? Holy, 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 holy what? He's the Lord, of Lord of hosts. Matter of fact, you can change that word host to armies. He's the Lord of armies. Yes. He's the Lord of armies. Yes. Come on. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of armies. Come on. The whole earth is full of what? His glory. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now the earth is full with it. We done found out that it's risen upon you. <laughs> we said the glory is risen on you. We find that the earth is full with it. And we also found out we come short of it. And at this point, we still don't know what it is. But we about to find out. We about to find out. Y'all good so far? Are you sure? Exodus, Exodus chapter 33. We about to find out what the glory is. When you find out what the glory is, you can now function in it. You in Exodus? You in in, in 33? You in 33? Yes. Keep keep thou finger thereeth. Speaking in King James today. Keep your finger right there and run your little self over there to Psalms. Keep your finger now. Don't, don't lose your place. Okay. See, I got three ribbons in this Bible. I love this Bible. Here's three ribbons. I can, man, I can go to three different places and come right back. Psalms. Come on, come. Psalms 24. Come on, let's read it with the gusto of the Lord up in the house. Come on, y'all, y'all. Let me get there. Hold on. Hold, wait for me. Wait for me. Wait for me. My, you know, like this new Bible, you know. Come on, somebody. Verse 1. Matter of fact, live stream. Humor me for a moment. Stand to your feet. Everybody in the house, stand to your feet. Come on, humor me for a moment and go here to Psalm 24 and read this thing from verse 1. We read not the King James live stream, so if you got something else, you read to yourself. Come on, glory to God. Verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And what? Shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, you everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is King of glory. Come on, somebody give him a hand. Come on, give a hand to the King of glory. You may be seated in his presence. He is, now we know he's the king of this glory. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Who's he talking to? He's talking to you. Lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the one that is the glory shall come in. Because he's your hope. He's the hope of your glory. Mm. Now we go back to Exodus. Had to get that in. Because I don't know if I get back after I get over here. So Moses, one thing about Moses is this. We know he was humble, right? Meek. But this brother was greedy. He'd already had the burning bush. He already had access to God on Mount Sinai. This dude's greedy. But he's also an intercessor. We understand that he's an intercessor, and I can't take you back to chapter 32. But chapter 32, he decides that he's got to go back up here on this mountain and make sure that God don't kill them people down in that valley. Yeah. Yeah. You see, because 
they, they, done, they lost their mind in making a graven image. And he said, let me go up here and see if I can <laughs> get God to not kill y'all. And so he's an intercessor. And this thing is serious, guys. So go over there to verse 12. Let's start there. I would like to start over at verse 1, but I'm, I'm going to do 12. And he says, And Moses said unto the Lord, Lord, see, thou says to me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou will send with me. Wait a minute. We've got to go back. I can't do that. So you got to go back to verse 1 because you got to understand why this is an amazing statement. Watch. Verse 1 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart and go up hence, thou and the people which thou hast brought out of the land of Egypt, unto the land which I swore unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, Unto thy seed will I give it. He says, And I will send a... Wait a minute. Somebody, is anybody reading with me? Yes. I will send what? Yes. I can't hear. What did God say he's going to send? Yes. Okay. He said, I'm going to send an angel before thee, and I will drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Pegasites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. He says, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, I will not go up in the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. Now, this is amazing, see, because I, when, when we go around the country, and I, this, is, this is the place I start talking to men about provision. But, but what's interesting is, God already told this man, <laughs> I'm going to send an angel, and this angel that I'm going to send, I don't need to send but one. And this one angel is going to drive out all of those nations. Every nation, come on, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, the Moabites, any bite, and any night, any kite, any kind of thing. I'm going to drive them out. And I'm going to let you enter into the land that's flowing with milk and honey. Now, when I read this years ago, what the Spirit of the Lord said to me is that many Christians would take the angel. Why? You got everything you want. You don't have an enemy anymore. All your enemies are defeated. Every one of your enemies is defeated. You have no enemies. You're in a land and you got everything you need. It's flowing with milk and honey. Oh my God. That's pretty good. <laughs> it's milk and honey. You are nice. You live in, you live in your best life. Just because an angel went. Look at what Moses said in verse 12. Now you get it. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou says unto me, Bring up this people, but thou hast not yet let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast found grace in my sight. Wait a minute, Moses. He told you he was sending an angel. Yeah. Moses said, God, I am not listening to that stuff you talking about. <laughs> you ain't hear me. <laughs> When God was saying that, Moses had his, his, his fingers in his ear going, na 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 I ain't hearing that. I'm not listening to none of that. I don't need that. But most people would take that angel. Hello? Verse 13 says, Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me thy way. He said, that I may know thee. He said, that I may find grace in thy sight. And consider that this nation is thy people. He said, and, I, and he said, look, look what God says. God changed his mind. God changed his mind. So therefore, the Bible says God repented. Because repentance is only changing your mind. You repent all day long. Did you know that? You repent all day long. You go to the refrigerator and say, you're going to, let me cook me some eggs. You know what? I don't want no eggs. I'm going to get this. You just repented. <laughs> Repentance is just changing the mind, going in another direction. Yeah, right. Are you are you are you are you are you with me? Yeah. And he said, "My my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest." Did you check that? Yeah. So he already got the presence, don't he? Yes. Yeah. I said he already got the presence. Does is the presence going? Yeah. He got the presence, right? He said, listen, no, look, I'm not going up here if you don't go. Watch. He said, and he said unto him, if thy present go not with us, curse not of hence. He said, if you don't go, I'm not going. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I don't care about no angel. I'm not going. Preach, Why? Because he said, for wherein shall it be known, here and I and thy people have found grace in thy sight. Is it not that, it, that thou goest with us? 
So shall we be separate, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. He said the only way that anybody will know that we're different is that you're with us. They will not know we're different because you send an angel in front of us and move all of our enemies and give us everything we want. Which most of the church thinks. That's right. That's right. Oh, Lord. The only way they're going to know we are different, you around. Mm -hmm. huh, that's good. Yeah. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Yeah. Now, that's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Now Moses got everything he wants. We're going to drive out the enemies, we're going to get the milk and honey. Need to put some, throw some cookies in there, milk and cookies. We need, um, we need to, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I need some help. I do need help. I really do need help. I really do need help. I will, it's going, you praying for me? Please, I really need, okay, so, so we got the milk and honey flowing, we got God with us, is that right? We got the milk and honey flowing, we got God with us. How many of y'all satisfied? Come on, anybody satisfied in the house? You got God with you. You know, not an angel now. You got God with you, his presence. You got the enemies destroyed. You got milk and honey. You, anybody satisfied? Moses wasn't. He wanted more Moses wasn't. Moses said, nope. Since I didn't come this far, I know that's right. let me try a little something else here. Yeah. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Moses said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, my God. And God said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. Yeah. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And I'll be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. And he says, Thou can canest not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me. Thou shalt stand upon Jesus. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all not hearing me. Thou shalt stand upon a rock. Oh, that's good. Because the only way you can take this is that you got to be in my son. And it shall come to pass while my glory passes by. So the glory going to, wait a minute, the glory going to be moving. We done found a whole lot of stuff about this glory. We don't know what it is yet. But it's a, it does a lot, doesn't it? A, a whole lot that the church don't say it can do. But it's doing it. He said, when my glory pass by, that I will put thee in the cleft of the rock. Now, you look at this word up. It means to be infused in. Matter of fact, it, this word means be, it's not a hole in the rock. <laughs> it's not a little crevice up in the rock. He didn't put him up because that won't go hold him. He put him in the rock. He put him in the crevice. He put him in the cleft of the rock. He, y'all remember the Fantastic Four? Y'all yeah. remember th the, the thing? Yeah. The rock man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's who Moses became. Y'all yeah. ain't hear me. Wow. Y'all ain't hear me. Moses was put up into the rock because the rock is Jesus. Y'all ain't helping me. The rock that followed them in the wilderness was Jesus. Y'all got to hear what I'm trying to tell you here. Get this now. Therefore, if any man be. You can't get, you can't see me. You can't have any relationship with me unless you're in my son. I'm going to have to put you in this rock. It's, it's, look, it's before time, but I got to put you up in here for you to even deal with what I'm going to show you. And you're not even going to see the, the good part. <laughs> Come on, somebody. He says, and I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my hand. And thou shalt see my what? Back parts. But my face shall not be seen. So, so matter of fact, you know, I think this is a certain change. He says back part of which I thought it used to be hinder part. It was hinder part. This is a certain change. Okay, y'all don't know what certain is, but bless the Lord. Not back part, it's a hinder part. But still is he says, You're gonna see my you're not the glory you're gonna see is not the front of me. 
You're going to see the back of my glory. But even for you, as, an, as a person under the law, to see that, I've got to put you up in this rock. You couldn't even take that if I showed it to you. Come on, somebody. Are y'all with me? Go to 34, chapter 34. Go to verse 5. And the Lord descended in a cloud. Moses is in his place. The Lord descended in a cloud. Why did he descend in the cloud? Why did he descend in the cloud? The cloud. So that the cloud could do what? Protect, Protect Moses from seeing him. He already told him, you can't see me and live. I told you that it's not about the cloud. It's about what's in the cloud. Yeah. So God comes down in the cloud. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing to the cloud. The cloud just a cloud. The cloud glad that it, that God's in it. <laughs> and the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. It says, and the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering. And abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, for forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sins, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, and upon the children's children, upon unto the third and the fourth generation. Now check this out now. What would happen? And Moses made haste and bowed his head towards the earth and worshipped. And he said, <laughs> If I have now found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go amongst us, for it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sins, and take us for thy inheritance. And I keep reading, man, and I kept reading, and, and, and I kept reading all the way through this chapter, and I still ain't found one place. I kept looking for it. So God, when you going to show him the glory? Hello? When you going to show him your glory? When you gonna show him your glory, God? I said, when you going did you see him? Did you did, did you see him show the glory yet? No. He ain't said nothing about no glory, did he? He proclaimed his names and all that. And when you gonna show him the glory, God? <laughs> and the Lord spoke just in my heart so nice. He says, read the passage again. And when I read it again, he says, you see it? I say, nope. <laughs> I probably could have read it a thousand times and still wouldn't have seen it. He said, it's right there. I showed him my glory. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. I said, you didn't show him no glory. Ain't no glory. Ain't, you ain't say nothing about no glory in there. <laughs> now, one time did you mention glory? He said, didn't I tell him I was going to show him my glory? I said, yeah. He said, then I showed him my glory. I said, so Lord, where is it? Yeah, yeah. So I can see it too. <laughs> <laughs> And he says, my glory is my character. And I went, oh my goodness. That's good. Oh my goodness. Your glory is your character. I immediately ran right back to Romans 3 and 23 and, and read it right. For all have sinned. Yes. And come short of the character of God. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the character of God is risen upon you. <laughs> the character of God will be seen on you. The goodness, gracious, God's character. <laughs> and what is this character? Man, my time. Look at that time. What is his character? He told him. He says, I'm, I'm merciful and gracious. I'm long suffering, abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands <laughs> and forgiving iniquities. He said, That's my character. Do you walk in it? Anytime you miss one of these qualities, you have come short of the glory of God. When you don't show mercy, 
you just come short. When you don't give grace, you just come short. Oh my Lord. When you're not in truth, I'm short. you just come short. Oh, I went, oh my God, the church has been looking for this for so long and they had it and didn't know what they had. So when we said, glory be to God, what did we just say? Come on. All of you, all of the character that I have from you, I give back to you. I'm showing you, I'm walking in that courage. I'm walking in, glory be to God, the grace of God be unto you, my Lord. Why? Because I graciously, I graciously help this person. I graciously, come on. And that's where, come on, the people that have been with me for years know that's where, that's where, why we um, give tips before it's time to tip. That's why we give to the waiter and waitresses money before they've done anything. <laughs> why do we do that? Because we're full of grace. Grace gives you what you don't deserve. So I give you the money up front. But you haven't done a thing. <laughs> well, I just graced you. Glory be to God. Oh, you're not hearing me. Yeah. And most people say all the time when we was doing this all over the place. I still do it. I don't know about y'all. Some of y'all might then you know come short. Y'all, some of y'all might come short. I can go. I can go out with somebody else at dinner, and I slip the person something, and, and they go, "Thank you so much." I'm not. I'm, I'm not the one that's here paying, but I'm gonna take care of you because I walked in full of grace. Yeah. You receive grace, right? Yeah, yeah. Freely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you supposed to do? Freely give it. You freely receive. Act like you're graced. Act like you're graced by gracing someone else. How, you, how, you, how many of y'all know I get good service everywhere I go? I don't get, I don't get bad service. No, no, because I've already done graced you up front. And you already know that this brother over here is nice. I did not give you a dollar either. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I ain't give you no dollar and make you think that you got something nice. No, I'm 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 gonna give if I'm gonna give you something, I'm gonna give you something that when you look at it, you go, oh yeah, thank you. Amen. Come on. I t now, for you that don't know, the people that have been with me, they know this story, they've been with me. My wife and I went out to dinner when I first learned this. When I first had this and started doing this, um, five more minutes, can I have it? Yeah. Okay. So, I, my wife and I went out to dinner. We went to a, 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 um, a steak, a, a, a real place, actually. Went to a real place. And um, the guy walks up, <laughs> the guy walks up to the table. And um, so, I had, uh, I took, a, I, I had a 20. I took the 20 and slapped it in his hand and he looked at it and he went um, oh thank you sir I, I, I haven't done anything I said yeah we, we know you're going we know you're going to do a great job and so we appreciate you um, serving our table thank you so much <laughs> and my wife said so um, you know what, what you like eating this brother sat at our table <laughs> <laughs> he literally sat down. You don't supposed to sit down at the table. You're the waiter, bro. <laughs> that brother said, "Wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. Let me give y'all the real good service. I'm, I'm gonna sit here and tell y'all everything." He went through the he went through the menu painstaking with my wife <laughs> because my wife wanna know about everything. Do you like this? How much of this? You like this? Have you ever had it? You ever had it? I'm sitting there waiting. I could have been over to my ribs. They having this. They having this conversation over my twenty. <laughs> this this conversation been birthed by my twenty dollars. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm trying to tell you. Our glass could not ever get empty. We couldn't even sip no water before that brother over there pouring. <laughs> I said, man, this is something else here. <laughs> he brought me the bill. He brought me the bill. And I looked at the bill and I said, okay, great. And my wife said, what are you doing? I said, well, I got to tip him. She said, well, no, no, you gave him. <laughs> you, didn't you already give it to him? I said, no, that wasn't no tip. A tip means you worked for me. Right, yeah. 
A tip is due based on your labor over me. What I gave him was something he hadn't done, I think. He didn't give me no water. He hadn't done a thing. And I graced him. And so that he understand it was grace, I got to tip him. Because if I don't tip him, he'll think that was the tip. So he'll, he would think grace. If he won't see grace, he'll see work. So, so then I tipped him favorably. Because the brother had done a great job. I, 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 could, I never got thirsty. <laughs> and everything we wanted was there. He was always look attentive to my table. So I tipped him nice. I think about $25. $25, something like that. $25, $30, something like that. So he got $45 from me. Hello. Just for waiting on my table. And when he picked up the, the check and he looked at it, he said, Oh, no, 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 no. You already gave me. He's, he said, you already gave me. No, no, you, no, take that off. I said, bro, what I gave you was a gift. What you're receiving now is for taking care of us. <laughs> I will never forget this all my life. He said these words to us. These were the words he said to us. He said, so um, when you come back, just ask for me. <laughs> when you get back, just ask for me, bro. Don't ask for nobody else up in here. Don't you ask for nobody up in here. Ask for me. <laughs> We've had so much fun with this. We've had so much fun with this. We, we had a men's meeting. My time, I, t I took my time. I'm just talking about grace. We had, we, had a, we, had a, we had a men's meeting when we were over in Mon on Monroe Road. You remember? And we went to Cracker Barrel. We had a men's meeting when all of us went to Cracker Barrel. It was a whole bunch of us. We f dropping up in Cracker Barrel. And the little girl comes, and I said to them on the way in, I said, Get, get it out. Get, get your grace out. So everybody pulling out their grace. Everybody getting their grace out. And I said, I said to them, I said, the meal's on me. I'm paying for everybody's meal. But you gonna gra we're going to grace her. I said, give me, give me your money. So everybody, I'm telling you, it had to be 20 of us. It had to be 20 of us. And I told you, you know, I told you, don't you be pulling up, you know, don't put on no dollar up in here, don't get, because you ain't, because you ain't, you're not paying for the meal. You know, I'm paying for the meal, so do good. So they sent, they, everybody sent the money around to me, and, um, and somebody had put a track with the money. Huh? No, no, I kept the track, Remember, I kept that track, I said, because, because, see, this is my problem. Christians go to the restaurant, put a track on the table, and ain't done nothing for the person. That's right. That's right. So you think your track ministering? You ain't even halfway tip. And you leaving a track on the table? You've been you've been demanding. Oh my lord! Irritable. Yes. Talking about the place, and then you leave a track. Take that track off that table. Okay, my time's gone. Let me finish this last story. So the person, they had to put a track, and I took the money and put it in the track. And when the young lady came around, she was trying to get all them drink all this, because it was a whole bunch of us. She was trying to get, because she had to get somebody to come out there and help her. When she got around there, I said, here you go. She went, oh! I said, yeah, we know. We, we, we're so glad that you are going to take care of us. We're Christians. We're glad you're going to take care of us. She went in the back. Ladies and gentlemen, she went in the back. And she, she went off. She went off. Now watch it. She went off and told everybody in the back about what this table had done. These guys had done for her. But guess what was ministering to her the most? The track. The track now had meaning. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know why? She saw the character yes. of God. Yes. <laughs>
know who came out the back? The manager came out. The manager came out and told us that she was more excited about the track than even the money. But she was grateful for the money. I, let, me, let me tell you one more. Can I tell you one more? Because this is so much fun. You got to try this. You got to try this. So we were in, we were in Atlanta on and we went into um, Papado's where the Lord resides. <laughs> Papado, God, God has a sanctuary in the back part of Papado's. Y'all need to go and check him out. We've been praying for Papado's to get to Charlotte and we don't understand what their problem is, but they need to be here. My Lord, that place. Woo! Jesus. So, and I'm going to tell you this. I went to a, I went to a meeting, a men's meeting, and I got the hotel room, a hotel room next to Papa Do's and could never get to Papa Do's. This was sin. <laughs> I said, you lying devil. This is a devil buffeting me. I can see, I can see Papa Do's out my window. But I could never get there in time because when I got from the meeting, it was closed. <laughs> and when I had to go to the meeting, it won't open. <laughs> Y'all know. <laughs> that ain't right. That ain't right, man. <laughs> ain't right. <laughs> so we, 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 we were in Atlanta. We ran up in Papa Doe's there on, on Jimmy Collar Boulevard. And it was a whole bunch of us this time, too. A whole bunch of us. And we're walking in, Pastor Paul Blue with me at this meeting. We were in Atlanta doing something, I don't remember what it was. And um, the, the lady took us all the way to the back. And so we all went to the back. I said, guys, get the grace out. So everybody knew, we're getting the grace out. Everybody getting the grace out. We got the grace out. And the lady walks around to my table and I give her the money. I said, thank you for serving us. We really appreciate it. We're Christians, thank you so much for being our server. And she said, oh my God. We're like, okay, this really means to her. She said, oh my God. She says, um, this morning, I said to God, Lord, I need the money to go on this mission trip. And I was short. And what I see here will let me go on the mission trip. Hallelujah. Will y'all look at Jesus? Now, this is what you got to understand. They took us from the front all the way back to the Holy of Holies. <laughs> I'm telling you, that I thought I was, I was trying to think about where are you taking us, honey? She took us all the way in the back because she didn't know that the lady needed it. But God knew that she was back there. Yeah. And God says, I'm going to let you be the answer yes. to her prayers. Yeah. Why? Because you're functioning in my glory. And I'm going to let you be the answer to her prayers. And she was messed up. She went in the back, told everybody, yeah. folk coming out to our table. <laughs> Pastor Luster and I would go to uh, go to Olive Garden when we when I had my office over in the East End. We would go to Olive Garden, and there was a young lady that was there, and her whole thing was, she told the people up front, when they come in, they go in my section, <laughs> and she won't blame. It was not a time. And matter of fact, when we everybody the the, the people in the front. When we walked in, knew us. Please say, hi, Mr. Jackson. Your usual, yes. Take me to my spot, because we're going to do our soup and salad and get on out of here with them rolls. Them rolls came from heaven. Yeah, yeah. The, the Levites, the Levites back there cooking them rolls. Those are Levitical rolls. That's showbread. <laughs> <laughs> them rolls are show praying, man. It's, Levitic, it's, it's Levitical priests back there doing them rolls. Y'all need, need to recognize. If you don't understand this stuff, just ask me. I'll tell you. <laughs> but this young lady would have us in her, and, 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 and she would literally sit at our booth. 
and talk to us and share her life with us. And we had the opportunity to minister to her on a regular basis because we graced her. I'm only telling you one thing. Look at the attributes that's there, which I've done a whole teaching on all of them. But on just on the grace alone, you could change people around you and the situations around you just by understanding how to grace folk. Because yes. most people have never experienced right. true grace. Yes. So therefore, they've never seen the glory of God. Yes. You see? Yes. See? See? That lady in the line, I always talk about it because I saw it, but that lady at the supermarket that is having a bad day and she's slinging your groceries and you ready to give her a piece of your ever-loving mind. <laughs> Ain't nobody, ain't nobody ever been there. Come on, she just, she, she ain't taking care. She's not taking care of the eggs like she should take care of the eggs. Come on, somebody, uh, y'all, uh, come on. Y'all never been, y'all never had her. If you haven't had her, come over to Southside. I tell you where to go so that you can experience this. So she's just slinging your groceries, and she's not really. She's trying to be fast, and the fast ain't good. She needs a piece of your mind. She needs a piece of your mind. The glory of God says no. Be gracious to her. Give her mercy. And forgive her day. Because you don't know what she went through. You don't know what she's handling, what's going on in her life. You don't have no clue about it. But she, God sent you through her line so she could meet his character. Wow. Amen. Oh there was one lady at the grocery store that never smiled. I didn't think I thought if she smiled, she would crack her face. <laughs> I got I, I got her I got her name. And every time I went to the store, I went through her line. I never, I, I would not go through, and I don't care how long her line was, I go through her line because I greeted her and I talked to her every day. And then one day I went, came through the line, glory be to God. She not only talked to me, she smiled. I, re, I found out she had teeth. <laughs> glory of God changed that lady yeah. but I would not go to another line ever her line was my only line That's good. until I broke her yeah. she had to meet God's glory father I thank you and bless you we are your kings and priests we honor you with everything that's in us and we live in the glory of God hallelujah let, our, let your character be our character let us function in this place now that the world would see the glory of God that is risen upon us. And Gentiles will come to the brightness of our shining and of our rising and kings to the brightness of our shining because they see the light and glory of God that's on us. We bless you and thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Live screen, we love you. God bless you. Thank you so very much for being with us. We're going to, look, give out there. That was one of his attributes. He loves giving. So give out there in Jesus' name. We love you. Have a great one. Bye-bye. What you guys learn? Y'all learn anything today? We have God. We are satisfied, but Moses was not. <laughs> 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 He just was not satisfied. He won't satisfy with just having God. No.